Hi everyone, I'm Tim Herrera, Communications Director for the Sacramento County Office of Education, and welcome to our virtual celebration of the Sacramento County Teachers of the Year for 2022. We are honoring a group of amazing educators for their dedication to students and families. Now, while we are not hosting a physical celebration this year, we wanted to continue and celebrate our teachers virtually. A committee of esteemed educators reviewed all the applications and interviewed our nominees via Zoom. They told us it was a challenging operation for them because just selecting two teachers of the year out of this entire group of amazing teachers was really difficult for them. So teachers, thank you for making it hard on the committee. So let's get right to it. I'd like to introduce Sacramento County Superintendent of Schools, David W. Gordon, who will introduce you to our amazing teachers. Superintendent Gordon. Great, thank you so much, Tim. And uh, let, let me just start out by thanking Tim and his terrific team here at, uh, here at SCOE who lead this competition and, uh, and help all of you through it. Uh, they just do an amazing job. And uh, also they have done such a great job during the whole emergency and the pandemic uh, in keeping us uh, in touch with, with all of our school districts and, uh, and all of you. And, and welcome to all of you teachers. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. We're really happy to see you, even if it's uh, on the screen instead of in person. And before we start, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to every one of you and to all of your colleagues for the work that you've done over the past 15, 18 months. Uh, it has really been uh, extraordinary. Uh, you've gone way, way above and beyond and all of your colleagues, and, and please communicate this to your your friends and colleagues, we owe all of you a lot. You've had to pivot and then pivot, and when you thought you were done pivoting, you've had to pivot again, and you may have to pivot again once or twice more as we go through the next, uh, the next semester or maybe this whole year. But I know you all do it because it's your work, it's what you do, and it's, it's bound up in your dedication to, uh, to our uh, our young people. I, I've now <clears throat> been blessed to have uh, two sets of family, uh, my daughter and son, and now my uh, three granddaughters have uh, all gone through Sacramento County schools, different, different districts, but all five of them, I'm here to tell you, received outstanding preparation for the next step uh, in their lives. And that was due to uh, folks like yourselves, and uh, we couldn't be more grateful in, in my family, and I know the families in Sacramento County are in your debt and, and so very grateful. So please humbly accept our appreciation and uh, uh, all, of our, all of our gratitude for all that you have done under, under very difficult circumstances. We, uh, we appreciate it so much. Uh, now, you should all have received a special package from us in the mail, and I know it told you not to open the package, but it's okay to open. Would you open the package now? Now, in your package, you will find the award we would have given you if we'd had an in-person celebration. You already, you also would have gotten a dinner, but we couldn't send the dinner in the in the package. There just wasn't room. So, uh, so that's that's your award. And again, uh, congratulations to all of you for everything, everything that you do. And and I know that so many of you are role models for your peers and colleagues uh, and that they look to you for advice and, and, and guidance. And, and again, I think that's something that all of you do that nobody really knows about, uh, how much you mentor your, your friends and your friends and, and colleagues. So what I'd like to do is have us hear from each of you about what it means to be a teacher and a, a few words about how you've navigated the last 16 months. So let me go through uh, and introduce each teacher and please 
say a few words to, to us, to the studio audience and the, the larger audience and to your colleagues as well. So I'll start with uh, Center Joint Union School District, the teacher of the years, Heather Woods. Heather? Hello, good evening. Um, it was interesting talking to some of my colleagues who have won this in the past. And one of the things they say is get ready, center is alphabetically first, so be prepared. And so then this seems so fitting that here is how all of us have come to you today to be on here. So for who I'm looking at, feel free thumbs ups and some waving and some nodding because that's how we taught this year to know that everybody was paying attention. Um, I just want to say that I am beyond honored and humbled to be here today representing Center Joint Unified School District. This, this means a lot to me that the amazing colleagues that I work with are are honoring me with that. Um, I've been teaching at Center for 22 years. Within that time, I have found that Center, like I said, is an amazing place. I know I've used that word, but it's because it is. We have a unique group of students who are from all kinds of backgrounds and we are able to provide them high quality education. Uh, I am extremely fortunate to work in a district that promotes positive relationships for not only students, but also for staff. We work together really well. I must say that without the support of my fellow educators, I would not be in this situation today. They have really helped me along with this process and with my 22 years in education. Um, over the past, uh, over the years, the thing I enjoy most about education, and I know most of you probably do too, are those aha moments. That is what we live for. That is what we love. It is that moment when our students look, they change their look on their face, and you know that they not only understand what you're saying, but possibly even have had independent thoughts because of what you're leading them to. So they are able to get that subject matter in a deeper way. I look forward to a time when we can go back to those aha moments to be in person, to be able to have those vital classroom discussions to get to that point. Uh, over uh, the last year and a quarter, I like to call it because we use teacher talk, so it, it has been a, a year and a quarter, um, it has been extremely challenging for educators around the world. As a group of people um, that are often extreme planners, we have been challenged day to day with the uncertainty. Uh, we've risen to these challenges. We've adjusted, we've adapted, we've persevered. Um, even now, going into this next year, um, we have, we are, are continuing to decide how this is going to work for us. But I know that we will continue on. I know that we will be able to uh, make this outstanding quality education for all students not only Sacramento County teachers, but California teachers and teachers around the world can make this happen. So thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Heather, for those, for those great words. Uh, moving on to uh, Elk Grove Unified School District, Tammy Null. Tammy. I wish I'd have known about that alphabetical thing. <laughs> Um, being here with these phenomenal teachers is absolutely incredible, and I'm really ecstatic to be representing Florence Markoffer and Elk Grove Elementary with Amy, who happens to be my son's favorite teacher. So that's a really amazing that, um, that I get to have that honor with her. Um, I still can't believe that I am Elk Grove's Teacher of the Year along with Amy. And um, being teacher is, it's the most rewarding part of my whole life. I mean, it's something I look forward to um, growing up and getting this honor is just incredible. Um, my mom, Sally, has always been my biggest cheerleader and she's always been there. My husband, Jeff, he's supported me the last 30 years and uh, we put his engineering degree to good use, making lots of things for the school, especially the summer when we were doing Camp Mark Offer, he built lots of cool games for the kids. Um, and my three kids, Brian, Sarah, and Madison, who were the guinea pigs for many of my lessons, including my online ones. Um, it's great to have a 17-year-old, a 19-year-old and a 17-year-old and a nine-year-old tell you, yeah, mom, that's boring, even in life, more or less on Zoom, mom. You need to change that up a bit. 
So um, really great to have them um, in my life. Um, teachings, it's not about just the academic standards that we teach. It's about helping our kids reach their full potential and finding their purpose and guiding them toward their destined paths. Uh, the most rewarding part is watching them succeed long after they leave our classroom. And strangely, these last 16 months, they've actually been the most rewarding of my career. I know that sounds weird, but it really is. Um, my unique ability for fixing weird tech issues or strange tech issues, um, it really served me well this year. And not only was I able to help my students, but I also got to help a lot of teachers in our district and outside of our district, administrators and parents as they navigated distance learning. And it helped me to learn and grow from this experience. And this is the beginning of a new era in teaching. And I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of it. And I'm really excited that at the start of it, I got this honor. So thank you for everyone. I just really appreciate it. All those teachers that, um, that I worked with um, in the past, you've made me who I am. And the staff and SEC TV um, parents, you've all been a part of my growth. And I hope I get to continue. and. Um, and learn and grow from you in this future. Thank you so much, Tammy. <clears throat> Next, also from the Elk Grove Unified School District, <laughs> Amy Raisin. That's a tough act to follow, Tammy. So <laughs> um, I am also like just so incredibly honored to be a part of this phenomenal group of educators and teachers. Um, I still sort of feel like this like level of imposter syndrome, like they must have got like the envelope mixed up or something um, because to some degree, I just feel like I'm always learning how to be a better teacher and connect with students and take on the next task. And um, I am so proud to work for Elk Grove Unified. I have a lot of friends in this industry and just knowing the support that we have from our administrators and our district and our parent communities. So for me, I think what was really great about this whole process was it allowed me to really reflect on what being a teacher meant to me. Um, and this year in particular, it was really about what does it mean to show up for our students every day? Um, how do I remain conscious of the opportunities that I have to influence the trajectory of their lives? Um, how do I build communities? How do I advocate for the voiceless? How do I lobby for change? Um, and that daily choice when we have our, you know, cameras off from our students of like getting into this mental space and authentic space of choosing every day to conjure up and plug in that like excitement and enthusiasm for our day and create meaningful relationships that, you know, recently I get these Instagram messages from, you know, students who graduated 10 years ago who are like having, you know, the time of their life becoming doctors and, you know, getting married and traveling and just the fact that they reach out, just those moments are priceless for me. And I am still honored that they are including me in their journey. Um, there is no greater gift in this profession than that, that connection that remains. Um, and for me, I think these past 16 months, they've been challenging to say the least. I think we would all agree. Um, I'm sure being on Zoom is a little overwhelming. Again, here we are, right? Um, but I think for me, um, this Teacher of the Year process in particular offered such an outstanding opportunity to reflect on the past year, reinvigorate my why. And I'm not sure that without that, I would have been um, nearly as strong and able to endure some of the challenges. Um, this school year offered an, a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and all of us to see these glaring undeniable inequities in education and witness the resilience of our students and um, just see when we come together in communities with parents and guardians and educators, uh, it just showed me how resilient everyone is in this profession and when we really lean into it, what we can do um, together. Um, and I think for me, especially in my world, you know, I learned this year being a mom and a teacher and a coach and a yearbook advisor. Um, I have a great, you know, partner in life who helped me take care of the kids while I was doing all these other things. And so I'm so grateful for my husband to just be there and help throughout all of that too. Um, we can't do this by ourselves. There are days where we're just empty at the end of the day. Um, and there are people in our world that fill up our cup and we're so um, blessed to have that. So um, this is just a really exciting opportunity. Um, I love what I do. I will do this until they tell me I have to get out of the classroom. So, um, and I am so honored to be here with all of you today. So uh, thank you for inviting me to this today and congratulations to all of you. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Amy. Next from the Folsom Cordova Unified School District, Yvonne Thornton. Hi there guys. Um, so being a Lancer is one of the most amazing and awarding, rewarding opportunities in my career thus far. And the actual instruction piece of my job as a teacher is one of the roles, but what I love and amongst the teaching aspect is that whole life 
I've been embodying the be true to your school aspect from the Beach Boys, which really fuels my deep passion and drive to collaborate with the teachers and the school staff. So we're serving our students and families and the community of Rancho Cordova to the best of our ability. And I never sugarcoated for my students about how hard distance learning was, but I, not just for them, but also for myself, but I always followed it with the statement that hard things are worth it. And even in the pandemic, when, you know, we did have a lot of trials and tribulations, there's so many positives that came out of it. For example, the fact that I'm still able to be in Alabama to support my family during a pretty hard time, I'm still able to also be a part of this ceremony. Um, so that wouldn't have been a possibility until this situation. I'm still able to teach my teachers at night. I'm still able to collaborate with my colleagues. And that is a something that's really important going forward that we can be flexible and think outside the box and we can serve students and our, our communities in that way. Um, I believe that in the, plus, the last year plus that we've really worked to uh, as an educational community to develop a grit and compassion that I think is gonna really help us and aid us as we continue um, in this journey. And I'm really excited about this opportunity and being amongst some amazing educators. You guys are my inspiration and I'm really excited to go into the next chapter with all of you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Moving on to uh, Galt Joint Union High School District, Mandy Garner. Mandy. Good afternoon. Um, I teach agriculture and one of the best parts about being a career technical education teacher is the opportunity to help students build their technical and interpersonal skills for a great career and a great future. And I'm just really thankful to be able to do this in a genuine way because I love my own career so much and to work alongside so many great teachers this evening and um, even my kids teachers and the teachers back in my own school district. I'm just really thankful for those a long time ago who, who encouraged me to pursue this work. Uh, there are several reasons tonight why I think I've had such a great career and have such a positive experience in the Galt Joining Union High School District. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank so many people. Uh, first to the Galt community. You really are a great American little town. And um, thank you for trusting me with your kids and letting them go on so many trips and events with us in our FFA program and helping me to grow professionally and personally in the last 16 years that I've been in the, in the community. Um, I wanted to thank our school district administration and our district itself. Going through this process allowed us to reflect a lot on what we've had the opportunity to do over our career. And I'm so thankful that our district encourages us to create a vision of anything that's positive to support students and then supports us and helps us to make that vision become a reality. And so for me in the last 16 years in our district, that's been developing a tremendous amount of facilities like a greenhouse area, a three acre farm, um, our own CTE building, all to benefit students. And I think anytime you can work in a district that will support you in that way with administration that will support you in that way, it's beneficial to everyone. So I'm just really appreciative to have had that opportunity in the Galt Joint Union High School District. I also wanted to thank um, all the teachers that I work alongside in, at Liberty Ranch High School for making our school such a special place. And if you're a part of a school that you know is special and that you would never see yourself teaching somewhere else because it's that great, then um, I'm thrilled for you and it's the same for me. And if you're not, I would encourage you to work to anyone who's watching, to work to make your school that really special place. Because when you have a staff that works together to make that possible, it's all the more beneficial for students. And especially in this last year, I think that's one thing that our district and our school site did was really support each other and work hard to make it still a special place for students, even if they couldn't be on campus. Specifically, I wanted to thank the Agriculture Department at Liberty Ranch High School to work alongside people who are innovative and creative and work really hard to be the best they can for kids is undeniably the best part about my job. And so I just wanted to thank them for being a great team. And especially in the last year when we had to get very creative to have hands-on learning through an online system and the tremendous amount of work that I saw my colleagues um, give and help each other do to create kits and make hands-on learning accessible at home. 
when you have all these tremendous facilities with shops and farms and all of that stuff at school, how do you help kids access that still at home? And so um, one of my colleagues sent home kits with full engines and they did full engine teardowns at home online. And I just think when you have that next to you and that's the support you're giving each other and that's the model you're seeing, it makes all of us better. And so I think there's some really cool things we can take away from learning online and the creative ways I saw my colleagues bring access to all students, I think will forever change the way I do some things with like home and hospital. From now on, those students will have full access to what's happening in the classroom. And I'm just really appreciative to work with such incredible people. My name is actually Mandy Garner, but people often refer to me as Mandy Gardener on accident. And I never correct this because I actually think it's a really great fit. I teach horticulture and floral design. And I, it is my honor to be our community's gardener. And that's the way that I, that's the tool that I use to try to help students and help serve my community. And so um, I just am really thankful for this honor. I'm thankful for my family and friends to all who are watching, who are a great support system. They all know that being an agriculture teacher is such a lifestyle and not just a job. And I could never do it without the tremendous support of my husband and kids and family and my parents and everyone that helps make all of that work possible. And again, congratulations to everyone here tonight. Thank you so much, Mandy. Now moving on to uh, River Delta Unified School District, uh, Julie Griffin. Oh, thank you so much. Um, first off, this came as such a complete surprise to me. Being a CTE teacher, I didn't even know it was possible to win an award like this. Um, I've been a graphic designer most of my life, and so this is actually my second career, and now I teach it. And I was able to build a program from the ground up, and I feel so fortunate that I get to do this, and I get to teach what I love to students. Um, I graduated from Rio Vista High School, where I teach now, as did both of my parents, my husband, all three of my daughters, and soon to have a possible ram in September. Um, so I think that makes it really special, and uh, it's just such a great place to teach. In fact, I did the math on this, and this upcoming year, 50% of our teachers are graduates. So I think that's a really special thing. I mean, obviously it must be a great place or who would, who would come back? Um, we have an amazingly supportive administration and I especially want to uh, thank my principal who um, embraces my crazy ideas, which come up quite often, <laughs> which inevitably gives her more work and as well as my husband, inevitably he has to help me do everything because they're usually grand. Um, uh, so I honestly believe that last year, every person in our district, every teacher, every teacher in the county, in the state, everybody should get this award. I mean, we did things that we never thought possible and we're you know, constantly changing and, um, you know, doing this, I felt like being flexible, being creative, being humble, um, and having a good sense of humor was really how personally I kind of got around this whole thing and telling the students, you know, we don't use these programs, but we're going to try them out. And if they didn't work, let's try something else. Um, I was so proud of what they accomplished. Um, amazing work that they should all be proud of. Um, uh, yeah, it was a difficult year, but um, I one thing that I... I noticed when we came back for hybrid in March uh, was the graciousness, um, the appreciativeness, the, the gratefulness of the students. They were so grateful to be with you, with their teachers. And um, it was so amazing to see. So yes, I'm thrilled to be here in the company of all you wonderful teachers and um, thank you to everybody in the district from the admin team uh, for nominating me. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Julie, very, very much. <clears throat> uh, moving on to uh, Robles School District, Charlie Moynihan. Charlie. Hey, hi, everybody. Uh, you know, I'm just thankful, just, just grateful, just happy, you know, that uh, I get to serve at the illustrious institution of learning known as Main Avenue Elementary and Robles School District. You know, I say serve because what, what, I, well, that's what we do. You know, it's not so much teaching. Yes, I, I to be honored to be with you all in this teaching inspired event. Absolutely. I see it a lot as much more so as service. I, you know, I, I, that's how I show up. And I just, to do that with the colleagues that I get to work with, um, my wonderful principal, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the reason why um, open door policies, you know, like go away just because I, I use them. And I, I'm just, I never believe that I have arrived. I think I'm uh, in this work. We, we're just constantly metamorphosizing. Um, hopefully that is, that is a word. you changing, you know, just trying to be the best that we can be. Um, I've been at uh, Robla now for, for this will be going on to my, my sixth year. And just to have the relationships um, all working towards this common goal. I just, that, that so many people at, at such a wonderful place can be focused on a goal that just happens to be the betterment of young people. Okay, you know, sign me up, I'll be there all the time. And in relation to the question of like, how did we adjust, how did I handle this last year? You know, my non-educator friends, they'll ask me that, like, eh, Charlie, how did you, how did you do it? Like Zoom must've been horrible, like how? How do you keep people, students focused it's simple. There was no choice. You know, there, there, there was no other option. So it's, it's, you do what you have to do. And a theme that I'm hearing with the, the folks that have spoken uh, prior to me is that there is this passion, this connection with who you are, and you give that to your students. Well, we're nimble. And, and we, we didn't have an option to deliver this amazing uh, service. There was no choice. So, you know, I, a big thing with me, just be patient, Charlie, be, be patient. Things will come, be patient. Well, happily, I think it served me that I wasn't too patient because we didn't really have time to be um, in this, in this um, switch this, this last year. So I just, to, to have this opportunity to be with you all, you're just inspiring me. I just, I cannot believe there are this many people that have been privileged, but then share this awesome opportunity that just happens to be such a phenomenal opportunity to impact the people that we get to work with. I just, it, it's, it's phenomenal. So um, I am normally long-winded. I will digress. Just thank you. Thank you, everyone, and humbled to be here. Thank you so much, Charlie. Moving on to Sacramento City Unified School District. Joanna Kirkman. Hi, good evening. <laughs> Sorry, that must be my dog's excitement with this evening. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm just really honored to be here and to listen to all of you. Um, it's, it's humbling to know um, that I'm amongst such greatness and talent. You know, I knew as early as first grade that I was gonna be a teacher. Miss Huddle was my first grade teacher and uh, she made learning exciting. She made it challenging. She was firm, she had high expectations, but I loved her and I wanted to be her. And how exciting that all these years later, um, I've been doing that for 27 years, living the dream of being a teacher, just like Miss Huddle, firm, challenging, but loving. Um, it is the job that I love. Yeah, I teach kindergarten. I'm the student's first entry into school and what a joy what a responsibility and how exciting to give them their first entry into school. And the fact that I get to do what I love every single day and, and share my joy with students, it, it's the greatest gift. Um, teaching is hard, it's demanding. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, and especially these last um, 16 months, it's a tough job, but the rewards are innumerable. 
So as people have said it, watching students learn something new, the pure joy on someone's face when they figure it out. And in kindergarten, that's reading. When they learn, they pick up a book and they read. That joy, that makes all the demanding and difficult uh, times better. And watching them do it this year on Zoom, that was amazing to see kids learn to read. Um, just watching them progress, getting smiles when they figured something out. The I love yous, the little love notes, you know, they do that in kindergarten, you know, they write you little love notes and they run away waving and screaming, I love you. And even on the Zoom, you know, they don't end it yet. I just, one more Miss Kirkman, one more, just a minute. Can we stay on and talk? So to see that joy, and I was, I was very concerned going into last year, you know, they're five and they've never been in school. And how do I welcome them? How do I bring them to school on a computer? And how do I build relationships with them through distance learning? And how do I manage them? Because in a good year, the beginning of kindergarten is hurting cats. For a good part of the year, it's hurting cats. And how do you do that when you're on Zoom? Because your only tool on Zoom is a mute button. And that is not a very welcoming thing to do, is to mute all. So how do we do that with kindergartners? And I was afraid. Um, I, I don't like the unexpected. I'm a very planned and organized uh, person. But I approached it like I do many things. I watched a lot of videos and thought, oh, that looks really hard. And I read a lot of books and I, I read about distance learning. And then I just jumped in with both feet. And I did not anticipate that these kinders, like all kinders, come to school wanting to learn. And these guys know, they didn't know any different. This was their normal. We always talk about the normal. When are we gonna return to the normal? This was normal for them. So my little face in a box, that was normal for my kids. And they didn't know any differently. And they, one of my favorite videos to watch over and over is the day I taped them coming into Zoom and to listen to 24 low voices. Good morning, good morning, hi, it's nice to see you. I like your stuffy. That was joyful. It was showing me that they had jumped in with both feet, that they were thriving and they were learning and they were building relationships. And so although this has been a challenging year, although we've all pivoted, um, that's what we do. As it was said earlier, we do it because that's who we are. And if we don't do that, then the potential of our students is compromised. We don't have a choice. We have to do it because it's our job and because they're counting on us and their parents are counting on us. And if we don't, then we are failing those whom we serve. So I'm honored to do my job every day. I love it. I cannot imagine, um, I cannot imagine doing anything else. I get bored in the summer. I miss, I miss the job um, and I, I can't wait to get back. I, I don't know what it'll be like. Um, but I know that just like I did this year, just like you all did, we will figure it out. And so thank you to, to all the wonderful teachers. Thank you to my students and to their families and to Ms. Huddle, because those are all of the inspirations that have gotten me here and will keep me going into the unknown. Because what we do know is we cannot plan for anything except tomorrow, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not even that, but we will persevere. So thank you very much for this honor. I appreciate it. And I'm honored to be here with all of you. Thank you so much, Johanna. M moving on to uh, another Sacramento City Unified teacher, Tracy Podsednik. Did I say it right? You did. <laughs> it, that, that was really good. <laughs> Um, apologies if I cut out because my internet is, of course, not working great right now. So a very indicative of the year. As, as everyone has already said, I am truly moved, incredibly humbled, feeling the imposter syndrome that someone mentioned earlier to be amongst you all, to be with Joanna as the Sacramento City representative. Um, I'm just in awe of what my fellow educators have done. My son took first grade online last year and uh, elementary school teachers are miracle workers. And um, it was really uh, incredible to watch how well she managed uh, whatever 25 seven year olds on a computer. Um, 
I'm also really thankful for this process. While this was incredibly out of my comfort zone, um, it was very helpful to reflect and meditate on how I could improve and better show up for the students that will be arriving in my classroom in the next years. Um, I want to thank my coworkers uh, who are endlessly helpful and supportive, especially Ms. Cecilio and Dr. Verscher, who have been absolutely essential in me getting through this process and um, massive support systems. They are both so insightful, so brave, so wonderful, and deserve many, many awards and much recognition, and it's a privilege to learn from them. Um, thank my family, my husband and my son for, for putting up with me in this job. Um, they know how much this job means to me, but how much it also takes me away. Um, but they support that, um, and I couldn't do it without their support. Um, and most importantly, although I didn't pass out the link so they wouldn't hear it, but to extend my heartfelt gratitude to my students, um, who just impress me every day. They're so insightful. They have so much wisdom. They teach me so much um, every day in the classroom spent with them is, is time that I cherish. I cherish the communities that we build. I cherish the memories that we have. Um, in terms of this last year, uh, I mean, unprecedented is overused, but um, I will say I have learned more in the past year than I learned in the previous 10. Um, I become more organized, which was a positive improvement. I've become more tech savvy, although um, not quite there yet. Uh, I've learned more about how to identify what's essential versus what is something I maybe like, but is not essential and could be let go of. Um, and I've learned a lot of ways to connect with kids that I can't see. Any of us who taught high school probably spent a lot of the year looking at a blank screen. Um, and I was, happy to see how I could still make connections despite not being able to see other people. Um, it was uh, a year of patience. We talked about that a lot in class. We all have patience this year for ourselves, for each other. Um, I, we found our rhythm. My students had an abundance of patience for me with my terrible Wi-Fi and my tech issues. Um, we found ways to create community. We found ways to share how we were feeling, how we were coping, how we were, we were taking care of ourselves and how we could show up better for each other um, online, virtually, and then hopefully in the future. Um, I got to meet a lot of really adorable cats and dogs um, and stuffies. Even high schoolers bring their stuffies to class too. And that was one of my favorite memories of this last year is all the high schoolers. I'm gonna tear up just thinking about it, grabbing their stuffies to show each other. They were seniors. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. Um, I, I sincerely hope that my students left this year feeling seen and supported in my class. Um, I have fond memories of all my students over the past 15 years, but this class, um, We've gone through a lot together, and I, I will not forget that. I will not forget how they, it feels to, to get their messages of love and support and um, to have them let me in their lives, even in a quarantine situation. Um, uh, yesterday, I received an email. It was very serendipitous timing from a former student from my very first year teaching in 2005, um, out of the blue email saying that she was thinking about me. and. Um, I just, I'm not proud of who I was as a first year teacher. Let me just say that. <laughs> but the fact that um, I can look back at how much I've grown and how much my students have helped me grow over the last 15 years, and to know that there were some connections made even in those rough first years that are still keeping me in their minds or in a few minds that many years on, it just, it means the world to me. Um, and I'm so thankful to have this job. And I know that I am where I need to be. And now I'm getting emotional and I apologize. <laughs> um, I just thank you all so much. Um, this is an incredible honor and I, um, I just love what I do. Thank, thank you, Tracy, so much. <laughs> and, and now it's my, my real pleasure to introduce our own Sacramento County Office of Education Teacher of the Year, uh, Nick Papagianopoulos. Nick? 
Congratulations. Again. Hi. Um, first of all, what an honor it is to be here with all these fantastic teachers. Um, you know, I honestly don't feel like I've done anything um, special. I just show up every day and do my job and do it to the best of my ability. Um, I certainly couldn't have, um, you know, um, achieved this um, honor without the support of my colleagues. Um, and, you know, I mean, I just work with an amazing group of people and, um, and I'll be forever thankful for that. Um, of course, it all starts at the top, the leadership, Superintendent Gordon, um, and our, our director, Michael Cass, and my site principal, Lauren Roth. Um, you know, I've been at, at Palmer for eight years, um, and what a journey has been. Um, we serve um, students who have severe academic and behavioral and social emotional needs. Um, and so, you know, every day, you never know what to expect, but we work hard, we show up, um, and we give them the support that they need. And um, a lot of these students have been given up by adults. They've been given up on by um, family members, by the system in general, by the school system. Um, and a lot of them have just been thrown away. And I love the fact that they come to school, they feel safe, we give them that, that place to learn and, and, um, and really have an equitable access to the curriculum. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of my colleagues and administration. Um, I have 11th and 12th graders. The, the thing that I love the most about my job is that um, I get to see these kids. I'm pretty much their last teacher before they transition into adulthood. So outside the, the core curriculum, you know, it's my job to help them gain those necessary skills that they need to become successful adults. Um, and I love to see them gaining that self, that independence, becoming self-advocates and just gaining that agency. The best part about it is when students come back to campus, because these are students, again, who have had a lot of times negative relationships with teachers from their past, um, you know, with school districts, with the system in general. Um, and so we're talking about reluctant learners. So we have to find creative ways to get them to engage and, and you know, be successful. So when they come back to campus, it feels great knowing that we've created those relationships with them and, and those bonds. Um, and it's just an amazing feeling to see that they, you know, now they're working in, in, in various industries um, and are becoming civic-minded adults because that's, that's our, our goal. Um, this last year was, I mean, we all know it, it was tough, right? But um, I think that, you know, the fact that we had to sort of um, build our capacity with technology, not only as staff members, um, but with students, right? And with parents as well. Um, we, without the support from parents at home, a lot of these kids wouldn't have, have made it through. Um, and so we had to work very closely um, and it meant constant contact, you know, uh, we're on the telephone, we're emailing, we're Zoom calls, of course. Sometimes we're making um, home visits, right? Talking to them out on the porch and just sort of, you know, giving them the information that they need. I can't log in. Okay, well, this isn't working. So I'm just gonna show up to your house and I'm gonna help you out, right? But all those things, you know, speaking for myself, I know that it made me become a better teacher. Um, I had the, the privilege of teaching summer school once we were able to go back into the classroom. Um, and, and again, I, some of us have, have talked about that when we went back um, for the hybrid uh, learning, uh, just the, seeing the appreciation that the kids had for being able to be in the classroom and have that, that interaction, that personal interaction. Um, and, I really enjoyed that. It was probably my most enjoyable summer school. So um, once again, you know, I love my job. I love working with those, with those students and the relationships um, that, that we created over the years, not only with the students, but with, um, with their parents as well. Um, and again, we have an amazing staff at my, at my site at Leopometer. 
Um, and it's our leadership, Lauren Roth. Um, it all begins with her. And, uh, you know, we, I'm really proud of the work that we do with some of the most challenging students in the county. And so thank you all and congratulations to you all for being here. <clears throat> thank you so much, Nick, and, and congratulations again. Moving on to uh, San Juan Unified School District, Michelle Horner. Good evening. All educators want to know that they impact their students. As I look around at the faces on this screen, I am truly humbled to be among them. People who are within our inner circles have seen evidence of our impact on our students, families, and communities, and nominated us. I must say, in this moment, I truly feel seen as an impactful educator. It is incredibly humbling and validating and not something we get very often. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Education is the perfect platform for this vision of life. Every educator here values students and wants to empower them to become who they aspire to become. When educators use a combination of rig rigorous instruction and powerful personal relationships to help their students see their potential and begin to believe in themselves, this changes the world of that student. Through our work, we are the change I want to see in this world. And we had to do it in the craziest circumstances possible in this past year, and we did. Not only am I so grateful to pursue this line of work alongside this powerful group of educators, but I have also been blessed to be surrounded by people who have encouraged me to be the change I wish to see in the world. In all honesty, the honor of being one of the San Juan Unified Teachers of the Year belongs as much to my support system as it does to me. My amazing husband, my two sons, and my parents have not only supported me, but been active participants in all of my initiatives. My teaching partners, administrator, and greater school community have all played an integral part. And my students, words cannot express the inspiration that my students are to me. They make me want to pick myself back up on the days when it all seems impossible. They make me want to keep going despite all of the moments of self-doubt because they believe in me as much as I believe in them. I only hope I make them feel as seen and encouraged as I feel right now. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, so much. And your colleague from also from the San Juan Unified School District, uh, Michael Lee. Michael, congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I was born on a Marine Corps base in Barstow, California. By the time I was three, I took I made a seating chart at the dinner table and took roll call. When I was in fourth grade, I offered attention to anybody with a cell phone that was near me in my class. <laughs> so I'm not going to go through my whole life. How boring would that be? Um, I do want to tell you something, though, that I think we can all relate to. Um, I think we've, uh, you know, various times in your life, sometimes you'll be complimented by someone. I think parents are the most guilty of it, where um, you don't especially feel that proud of it. You know, your mom says, you ate that pizza majestically. <laughs> mom, I was hungry, you know, <laughs> not that big a deal. Um, <laughs> you know, but you'll, you'll get complimented for something that was just so absolutely ordinary. Um, a decade ago, I'm in my, I'm, I'm gonna start my 30th year, all at Bella Vista. I'm a Bella Vista grad. My, my stepdad and my mom met there and married there. Uh, my kids go there. I'm a Bella Vista person uh, through and through. Um, and the thing is, is about a decade ago, I got nominated as Teacher of the Year. But at that same time, I was the athletic director at the school. And I just was, I just knew I was not good doing my best work, putting out fires with the athletic department and all that. I was on autopilot as a teacher, you know, because I really love the profession. I, I find it so intrinsically motivating. You know, we don't get paid in the summer, but I put massive hours in in the summer. I can't wait to roll out my new material. And, and it's, it's pure joy and it's uh, I'm in a state of flow. I just get lost in time uh, doing it. But, um, and I didn't follow through on that one because I felt so undeserving. Um, then this time, time comes around and 
And I felt like I'd done a good enough job. I think, you know, uh, coworkers will come watch my class. They'll send their student teachers to watch my class. Administrators will come watch. And I feel like I've, uh, I've, I'm doing okay now. And so I went through the process. And, and I really am honored to be amongst all of you because, like I said, um, I didn't feel deserving at all to even go through the process once upon a time. But with, uh, I'm just, I just love the profession so much. I love, I'm a total challenge guy. I coach uh, wrestling. I coached the Belvis team for 26 years and hyper competitive. And I, and I love that every day is a challenge there. There, there is no, as, as Charlie said, there is no done. I mean, if you're done, you are sunk. You're absolutely sunk. Um, I love trying to figure out new. And uh, like I said, it's just, it's a, it's a joy. Um, I really want to make, take a second and, and, and thank three particular teachers that have really um, been inspirational to me. One was uh, Eudine Fellows who taught US history at Bella Vista when I was there. And I had no inkling I'd be a teacher. I didn't find teaching until I was uh, about 27, 28 years old. Um, but she just made it come to life. You know, uh, The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, you know, she was uh, telling the story of that while with, an, with a tray of food of toothpicks with meats of different salamis and hot dogs and passing out. She told about the, you know, <laughs> the meat packing industry and how horrible it was. And when she talked about promontory point in the meeting of the tra railroad train, she had a railroad hat on and when you know, and talked about um, here I am, look how old I am. <laughs> and I still remember that John Adams, when he spoke, had had um, saliva that would build up in the corner of his mouth that she would talk about, but she just made it come to life. I mean, that's forever ago. That is forever ago. And I still remember that so easily. Uh, Yvonne, do you know a guy named John Barris? Uh, John Barris is a teacher at Cordova High School. He was my master teacher when I did my student teaching at your school. Um, obviously, I'm old, so it's been a long time. But John Barris was like Eudine Fellows. He made it come to life. It was like, it was like watching De Niro or Meryl Streep. He could just, he could just sell a story and sell it and and just grip his audience. It was, I mean, those two people are exactly what I wanted to be. Even when Eudine taught me and I didn't know I wanted to be a teacher. And this is kind of an unusual one. My stepdad was, act, uh, I had him as a teacher at Bella Vista. He taught freshman world history. And I, to be honest with you, it's probably my least favorite class I ever took in my entire life. <laughs> He's a loving, kind man and I love him uh, to death, but I couldn't stand his class. But the reason I bring it up is at the end of the year, they don't do this anymore, it's been long gone, but uh, students used to vote on teacher of the year for like the last rally, senior goodbye rally. And he would win teacher of the year all the time. And I, I like, I don't understand. And, uh, but the thing is, is, is in a time, like take about this COVID, when life is in such chaos, kids come to school hungry, kids come to school having been ab abused. But the thing is, is what I, under what I learned from him, which is really important, is that there's, there's a predictability in teaching that needs to be there as well. You want to be creative. You want to come with some, you know, both guns blazing. I got a great lesson today. Let me show you what I have in store. But there's got to be a, a rhythm to everything as well, so they can predict and they know they know what to expect. And uh, while I wouldn't want to copy the the mannerism of the class, it was an important lesson to learn because I think that has to be there as well. Because, like I said, I spend summers trying to update and trying to be better, um, and you know, come with some new stuff that I can't wait to roll out. Uh, but I always want to make sure that I, I hold true to the to the to the format of class, so so that I am predictable and keep and kids can do that. Um, anyways, thank you so much. I I appreciate your listening to me for a minute, and um, like I said, thank you for being who you are and being examples for me to. Once again, I'll take what I learned here and kind of add it on to my lessons as I roll out new stuff this year. Thank you so much, Michael. Now moving on to our last district, uh, Twin Rivers, uh, two representatives. We'll start with uh, Aaron Tobias. Aaron, It is an honor to be here with all of you. I love listening to all the passion that everyone here has for education. I've been, I've teared up a couple of times. <laughs> I've been, you know, taking notes because I, I just, there's so much to share, but um, I, I'm new to uh, Twin Rivers. I'm new to Sacramento area. I moved up here two years ago from the Central Coast, so I'm not new to education, but I love how welcome I've been welcomed in. Uh, Twin Rivers is an excellent school district to work for as a CTE teacher. Um, they are, they're very, very supportive of me and everything I wanna do. Um, the food trucks I'm opening, the cafes I'm starting, um, the answer is always yes to everything I wanna do. And I work all summer long uh, preparing for the upcoming school year. 
So um, like everyone else does here, but I'm so happy to hear that there's so many CTE teachers in here as well. Um, I was really surprised to, to receive this award and so honored. So many days we go through teaching and our, it's rewarding on its own and, and not very often do we get the, um, the formal awards of being named District Teacher of the Year and, um, and so on from there. Um, being, a, being a culinary teacher is a lifestyle. It is, um, it's, you know, I did an externship last night. I worked a catering event and I got up at 9 p.m. Um, because we always have to be green and growing and keeping ourselves relevant in the industry. So I'm doing events all year long in the industry just to make sure that I'm up to date on what's going on as I send my students out into the world of work. Um, we get the honor of teaching the students to be ready for both college and career, which is, um, is powerful because we're, we're helping them decide on those careers early so that they can see what they like and they don't like, um, as well as preparing them for college. Um, this last year has, has been a really hard year for me personally. Um, it was definitely a year of growth. I lost my dad in November, so I was very happy for COVID that, <laughs> try not to cry, um, but I was able to be with my family. So I was able to teach from my parents' house. Um, people asked me, how do you teach culinary online? And, and I figured out how to do it. I came back and I gave out kits of food to, for, um, so that students could feed their families. And um, with my school district, with my uh, Foothill staff, we all came together and um, passed out food kits to families um, so I could teach them online how to make those foods. Um, it's definitely definitely been been an interesting yet hard year um lots of thinking outside the box um it has been you know as a high school teacher a junior and senior teacher um it's not often that we we get to connect with families and zoom has really changed that it was really able to connect with with families and and um to, to have more of a more of a um relationship with those families which is really nice um, I'm so thankful for my principal, Heather King, and for my whole um, team at Fiddle High, for my um, CTE staff, especially uh, Denise Egan and Rob Roach, who have been so supportive to me. They're getting emails from me um, all year long and all summer long, and they're to help support me. Um, and to my family, I'm very thankful for my family. So thank you for this honor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron, and, and welcome to Sacramento. Glad, glad, you're, glad you're here. And our, our final Teacher of the Year, uh, representing also representing Twin Rivers, uh, Kayla Ulrich. Hi, good evening. Go it's been a pleasure getting to know all of you for the past hour. <laughs> um, well, I guess, so when I first started teaching, I actually worked in the district that I had grown up in. And it was maybe two or three blocks from where my parents live. So I got to have my family very present in my first couple of years of teaching. Um, my mom and my stepdad volunteered at least three days a week. And with that, I got a lot of feedback, sometimes unsolicited, but just help and support. Um, so this year, reflecting on everything that we've been through as a community, it feels very full circle to me. Um, only now I'm appreciating the new family that I've built here in Twin Rivers, also being a transplant like Aaron, um, new to Sacramento as of three years ago. Um, so just appreciating my Babcock family, the people in Twin Rivers who have helped and support, and then being on Zoom and that presence of the students and their families also giving that help and support um, and feedback, this time solicited, uh, to continue growing and improving as a community. It's really felt very reminiscent of my first year's teaching, of course, because we've scrapped what we knew and started over, but with the goal of learning and with the goal of building up our communities. And it's been incredible to see everybody bring their strengths. Um, and so really using that and building upon that, especially on our school site, um, all of the, uh, my colleagues, we said, okay, this is what I can do. This is what I can do. We've been training each other. Twin Rivers has offered any training that you could ask for. And so we've been really fortunate 
to be able to grow together as a community and provide what we hope is equitable access to education for our students. Um, one goal that I really do have moving into next year is to continue growing on that. So continue pushing for these relationships and more presence of our community within my classroom and just appreciating all that the families have to bring to our community and their home cultures and what they've learned outside of the classroom and really incorporating all of that to be our best selves. It's been a true honor and a joy to be able to experience this year with so many qualified educators. And I'm just so grateful to my families and to my students for trusting me. I was able to loop with them from first to second grade. So I have primary age students and they, I think they taught me more this year. They gave me a front row seat to hope. They just have such huge hearts and open minds and they're so excited to make the world a better place. They embrace diversity. They are always eager to spread kindness in any way. And they've just taken, taken on challenges and risen to the occasion every time, demanding more rigor, looking for more time together. And so they've been the inspiration and kind of building that hope up all along the way. And I can't wait to see where they go with that. When I was growing up, I always felt for my parents that no matter what I did, that didn't take away from the love that I had. And that's what I hope to bring to my classroom is it's all about the learning. Our love for them remains the same, no matter what, we're there to teach them and to partner with them in their lives and to make them see what they are capable of, explore their passions. Um, so it's an honor to be able to partner with families and students at an early age and get to see as they grow. Um, and so I think this will be going into my ninth year. So my first graders are now starting to trickle into high school in the world. And I'm just excited to see what life has in store for everyone. And congratulations to you all as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kayla. And, and thank you. And again, congratulations to all our nominees for Teacher of the Year 2022. Thank you for your words. But most of all, thank you for your passion and thank you for your undying uh, belief in our young people and your, your, uh, your passion to make them all they can be. It's, uh, it's very inspiring to uh, to all of us. So, so thank you. And now it's time for us to announce our first teacher of the year for 2022. And to do that, I'd like to introduce our uh, dynamic Sacramento County Board of Education President, Karina Talamantes, to first say a few words and then announce the first name. On behalf of the Sacramento County Board of Education, we want to thank our 14 incredible teachers that are representing their school districts in the 2022 Teacher of the Year competition. All right, in my hands I have two envelopes with our two nominations and I'm so excited to reveal the names. We're going to announce the first Sac County 2022 Teacher of the Year. Get ready. A mathematics study skills and ag chemistry teacher from Cordova High School in the Folsom Cordova Unified School District, Yvonne Thornton. Congratulations! <laughs> chemistry was never my strong suit, so kudos to you and all you do for our kids for making it fun. Congratulations, uh, Yvonne. Uh, would you like to say, would you like to say a few words? Um, this is absolutely amazing. Um, like I said, I'm humbled by all of you just hearing your stories and all the amazing things you guys did this school year. I, I was with you in that, in that journey and oh my God, that's really big. Um, there's not really enough room on my desk for that, but don't worry, I'll figure it out. Uh -huh. Um, this school year was something else. It's one for the books and, um, I'm, for, for, for the year being so hard and this happening, like, is just, 
I really think like everybody said, our colleagues really deserve so much credit and to be that spokesperson for my district and for my school and now for the county is just an amazing, amazing honor. And I really appreciate this. Okay, thank, thank you and congratulations again, Yvonne. And now, uh, Mandy, uh, what did you think of the garden behind uh, Karina? <laughs> I'd like to have uh, President Talamantes announce our second teacher of the year. Let's, let's bring Karina back. And our second teacher of the year, she teaches environmental horticulture, elements, and principles of floral and design, that sounds nice, and advanced floral design from Liberty Ranch High School in the Galt Joint Union High School District, Mandy Garner. Congratulations, Mandy Garner and Yvonne Thornton on receiving the 2022 Sacramento County Teacher of the Year Awards. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karina, and congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Mandy. Would you like to say a few words? First, the garden's beautiful. <laughs> so that was, um, a really nice location to be recognized. I just want to congratulate Yvonne, a fellow ag teacher. Um, I can appreciate how hard you work and all the people here work, but a special congratulations to you, Yvonne. Um, I want to give a shout out. I have a lot of people still on Zoom and I am just so blessed. I think it's a testament to the incredible support system I have. And um, so this award is to many people. It takes a lot of community and a lot of, a, a lot of support to um, be able to do cool things with kids like we get to do in the Galt district. And I'm just thrilled to represent all of you. I am so grateful and appreciative. I wish I had some really profound words, but Amy, Joe, my mom, Tiffany, Missy, Taylor, James, and Lisa, who are still online. Um, I'm just so blessed. Thank you. And I'm so blessed for the community that I have. And um, it sounds like we've all had an, an incredible year and found really great ways to still motivate and help and support students. And at the end of the day, awards are really fantastic and they're an honor. And it's really so nice to be recognized for those efforts. But at the end of the day, when we're just helping kids and recognizing them, that's the most important part. And um, I'm just so appreciative for the honor and I'm appreciative to stand beside so many great teachers in California. And um, I wish us all the best of luck this next year. And I'm happy to represent our county and I think we're doing some really great things in Sacramento. So thank you for tonight and for the honor and um, for all the people out there who helped make this possible. And thank you, thank you, Mandy, again, and congratulations, and con congratulations to, uh, to, to Yvonne as well. Before we move on to Tim's uh, closing, we'd like to hear some words of congratulations from last year's Sacramento County Teachers of the Year, Belinda Foster from Twin Rivers and Linda Betancourt from Elk Grove. I'm Belinda Foster and I had the honor of serving as a Sacramento County Teacher of the Year with Linda Betancourt during the craziest year of our lives. It's time to pass the torch on to the 2022 recipients. Mandy and Yvonne, each of you positively impact students' lives in creative and authentic ways. Your work is transforming not only your school site, but your community as a whole. It is a pleasure to pass this award along to you to two very deserving educators. Congratulations and good luck in what comes next. My name is Linda Betancourt. It has been a privilege and an honor to represent Elk Grove Unified School District and the Sacramento County Office of Education, along with Belinda Foster, as the 2021 Teachers of the Year. It has been a little bit of a difficult year, but hope is on the horizon in 2022. And I wanna congratulate all of the 2022 nominees for Teacher of the Year for Sacramento County. You are here because you have changed the lives of your students and inevitably you probably have changed the lives of your colleagues as well. I wanna give a special congratulations to Yvonne and Mandy. Great job. I look forward to seeing every accomplishment that you have as you move forward in the process to becoming Teacher of the Year for the state of California. Job well done. Thanks to both of you for those uh, those comments. Another another great looking garden there, there, Mandy. 
Uh, anyway, uh, it's been a it's been a real pr pleasure and a privilege to get to know all of you this evening. Uh, congratulations to uh, to all of you. Uh, you'll have a great year. We have some great activities which will be which will be coming up. Uh, Mandy and Yvonne, uh, our team, Tim and his team will help you with preparations uh, moving forward. From here, and and with that, uh, I'm going to throw it back to uh, back to Tim, and he'll he'll tell you about what's next. Tim, yeah. Superintendent Gordon, thank you very much, and, and and to the teachers, thank you for sharing your stories, uh, both personal and professional, uh, just very very touching. And congratulations to Yvonne Thornton and to uh, Manny Gardner Gardner Gardner. Um, we appreciate uh, you both very much. Uh, we're arranging with your superintendents uh, to make sure that you receive your uh, Eleanor Lincoln Hickey Award uh, of Merit, which is the highest honor bestowed by our Board of Education. So Yvonne, I know that you talked about that trophy next to Superintendent Gordon. Uh, that's going in the school um, trophy case. Uh, yours, yours is bigger. No, I'm kidding. Yours is much more manageable and uh, it'll, it'll look nicely on your desk. Um, but also our, our friends, uh, the Scottish Rite Bodies of Freemasonry will have a celebration. Uh, we will plan on having celebrations this year. Um, I guarantee it. we will have some fun. Um, our two top teachers uh, chosen tonight will be um, eligible now for the California uh, State Teachers of the Year. Um, and all of us at the Sacramento County Office of Education want to congratulate all of, of our teachers uh, just for being such such wonderful leaders in education. Uh, so teachers, thank you for your passion and your commitment to shaping young lives. You are really the best in education. So thank you very much and uh, have a good night. <laughs>